friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cinderella Mouse and we're back with Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Thank you to the EA Creator Network as always for providing me with codes for their games. Alright so this is episode four already and uh, we are exploring apparently. What's this? Collect. New codex to the lighthouse. Okay open codex. Library. Codex. Uh, where would it be though? I don't know what it'll be. Is it this one? Introduction to the lighthouse. Are you ready? I'm gonna do the voice. Introduction to the lighthouse. Once the lighthouse was a place of learning with tools to study the secret workings of great magic. When Solus rebelled against those who call themselves our gods, the lighthouse became his center of operations with tools to study the best ways to free ourselves from the tyranny of Ivanuris. Evanuris? Evanuris. The tyranny of Evanuris. You are safe here. Both those of flesh and those of the Fade. Any who wish to help are welcome. The magic of the lighthouse will provide for your needs see to your comfort and even help you understand different tongues for those who escaped here from distant parts of the empire should you have any other needs ask for the slow arrow and i will help for lesson i don't know who that is again i haven't played any of the other games i know nothing what i am thinking is ha ah, the fade it sounds a bit like the shadow fell sort of kind of except for its dreams instead of kind of deathy uh so that's what i'm thinking there uh, i don't remember actually coming into the library but i guess we did oh no we're in that room with the table okay so we're trying to open that door aren't we and we can go kind of underneath us like down to the basement all right I have a bit of a plan since the last episode. Can I just jump over the edge here? Yeah, without even hurting myself. Cool. Um, I, do you remember the statues that I was trying to like turn? And I wasn't sure exactly which way to turn them. Now I've re-looked at the notes and it says that it's three pairs. Because I was confused because I was looking for three statues that all had to face maybe the wolf in the centre because they're having a meeting and the wolf was the leader. He was soulless. So that was my logic there. But then I reread it and it says three pairs come face to face. And when I was editing my footage back and I went and I was like down here, can I do I move faster? Is there like a is there like a speed? Let me know in the comments if any of you know. Is there like a go faster button? Because I need it. <laughs> I feel like I'm running really slowly. So yeah, when I was editing my footage and I was like moving this one, I realized that there's one across from me as well. So if I turn this to face that one. Because this is a pair, right? So if I turn that one round this way to face this one, then that'll be like one pair facing each other. Okay, so now I need to go over there and figure out how to do that. Do I run faster? Is it like Minecraft? Do I run faster or slower if I jump? I think I run slower. Ugh. I don't know. Please tell me there's like a speed forward button, guys. Okay, but how do I get to that one? Because it looks like it's like... Oh, look, I can go down. Oh, guys. Explore your... Ooh. <laughs> Explore your environments. Be Lara Croft. Don't fall down. Okay. Nice. This is like loads of treasure here. Collect. Okay. New... On divine imperatives. Okay. On divine imperatives. The helm of the solar is destroyed. Elgarnon's favourite torture is over. Too many agents have been rescued with their minds burnt out by that memory of an enraged sun. I feel a lesson here. The helm was not created to torment. But the Ivar... I can't say this word. Ivanuris are not as we are. A god's ruminations carry their own will and imperatives. Memory bleeds into their icons and transmutes them as fire begets fire. That's really funny because I had that song, fire around fire would normally kill us, stuck in my head today. And I think it's probably because I kind of like uh, predict things that I'm going to be doing that day. And it's only minor things, but I think it might have been this. Um, for our wolf lord, who puts so much of himself into his creations, what imperatives do they carry? 
The heart of a rebellion must remain hidden, and yet the light of divinity is uncontainable. We must be swift. A thought lingers. Even as he saves us, what does he impart upon us? Reflections by Shehan, one who renounced Dan Val. You're going to have to excuse me that I'm bad at names. I think I've got all my companion names down though, right? I've got Nev. It's not Neve. You don't pronounce the E. It's Nev. Um, Harding, because it's like Tom Hardy, but Harding. And I've forgotten the guy's name now. Oh no, Bar Bar Baris? Is it Baris? I, th I think. And Solas. So I'm learning. I'm getting better, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, where is this statue? Over there, I see it. Turn the statue. Uh, we want to turn it like that way, so it's facing that one, right? There must <gasps> be two more. It did something. Okay, let me put my other headphone in because I can't hear them talking otherwise. Okay, I figured it out, guys. I've mastered the puzzle. Right, jump up there oh gosh he does not jump well <laughs> i want to double jump let me double jump let me run faster and double jump <laughs> the movement is slightly frustrating so far okay and then there was like a place to go up wasn't there up here oh that was cool <laughs> can't say i did it on purpose but let's try and do it on purpose now yeah look at that like car bonnet slide Okay, so up here there's some more statues. I'm figuring that this must be like where the companions come. So uh, that kind of like wizard's tower looking place is where Nev is because she's a mage. And then the place that looks kind of a bit naturey, it's got like a tree outside. That must be Harding. This one here in front of us, that's like Harding's place. So I think you gather more companions as you go. And then like maybe you get to decide which ones you take with you on missions. Maybe it's like a four person at a time thing. Um, and I guess they go in like the other little places, like the other little buildings. Uh, anyway, we've got these two statues that I can kind of like make face each other. Hopefully, oh, I didn't, didn't, I am bad at the controls. Am I bad at the controls or are the controls bad? No, it's probably my fault. <laughs> Let's not blame Dragon Age. That's a second. No. One more to go. Yay, one more to go. And then there's another statue around here. That one, and that's facing the right way already because if I stand with my back to it and look this way, yeah, there's another one over there, do you see? I was just stupid and I made them all face the middle. <laughs> well, let's go and get that other one. <laughs> okay, how did I get up there though? I didn't jump up there, did I? Wait, hang on, how did I? Oh, it's up there. <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> yeah, I would probably have definitely fallen to my doom if I'd have tried that. <laughs> yeah, all the jumping around is like frustration that I'm not moving faster. It's okay. like I'm going back to Minecraft. That did, something. that did do something. Like I'm going back to Minecraft rules where it's like, if you jump, you kind of like go faster, but it's... <laughs> Like Baldur's Gate as well, you can jump further than you can run sometimes if you've got a strong character. So it's like frustration. It's a bit like how my dad, when he was driving and he wanted to go faster, he'd go like that on the wheel as though that was actually going to make the car go faster. <laughs> it's like the same rules. It's like if I jump, I feel like I'm covering more ground. But I think it's actually... Oh, look! Wait, wait, wait. How am I doing that? <gasps> Guys, wait. I might have just solved all my problems. That's normal. Do I have to like tap forward twice? Hang on, wait, 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 let me figure this out. No, I don't know what I did. What if I, oh, there we go. If I if I press down, so if any of you are also playing on a NAF controller, um, if you press that button, you do that. Oh, it opened. Okay, let's go in here. This is pretty. This, I like this. This is decorative and gorgeous. So in my D&D &D campaign, I've got a place called Black Mountain. 
and it's all like miners and it's built into a mountain and everybody's like stone workers so like this is how I imagine like the inside of Black Mountain looking just all carved and absolutely stunning okay oh another missive more reading I'm gonna have to drink some water so I'm guessing like a lot of this reading is for like the hardcore Dragon Age players who've played all the previous games. I'm, I figure it's like, it's like if they did a Baldur's Gate 4 and I found notes from Astarian, I'd be fangirling, but I don't know any of the characters, but I'm going to read them because maybe some of you like this. Um, open codex. Memories of a duet. The sheet music left by this instrument appears to be for a duet. It has been annotated by an expert hand. The annotations are accompanied by clear emotional impressions, diligent practice with a ruthless eye to mistakes, the relief of private achievement, away from well-meant misunderstanding and mindless worship, an unspoken joy in the center of rising perfect echoes. Finally, a beloved memory surfaces a smiling glance meeting at a crescendo, a shared moment of understanding, seeing completely and being wholly seen. The impressions fade. I guess that's like, like soulless romance lore or something. <laughs> like woohoo through music, that kind of thing. Okay, treasure, give it to me. Thanks, a flawless crystal. Really like relatable. <laughs> Open this. Beautiful. And uh, is there something else over there? No, sometimes things look like you can pick them up, but you can't. There's a lot of stuff in the environment that looks really interesting. And it what would have been nice, I think, for Dragon Age to do, it would have been a bit time consuming for them, but it was like, you know, like put little tags on them so you could read like a, a short description of each thing. You know, so you can like view it. Okay, so I guess that was just like the room in Laura's house where you just get a bit of lore, you get a few artifacts from like previous adventures, that kind of thing. Okay, let me just quickly double check the map because I don't want to like miss anything. And it did say there's like temporary things. No, nobody wants to talk to us. It's a bit like in Baldur's Gate, if you go to camp and you're long resting and they have like the little exclamation mark over the head and it's like, don't miss this opportunity to chat so they have a similar thing there but nobody wants to chat right now so i'm gonna go down the stairs to the basement and we'll check out what's in here oh i've given my girl a little bit of a makeover as well well i'm not entirely happy with how she looks she looks similar to how she looked before but uh i was trying to make her hair pink and stuff but it's still purple <laughs> i've changed her makeup a little bit um, I've taken off as well. She had some like scars on her face and they kind of looked a bit like frown lines, which I didn't mind too much, but it looked a bit weird because they weren't frown lines. Um, and I've just replaced it with a cheek scar because I've got a cheek scar in real life. I probably can't see it. I do kind of cover it up. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a more dramatic version of my actual real life cheat scar. She probably got it in sword fighting though because she's like a two-handed weapon fighter. I got it from jumping on my dad's bed and I actually myself with my own thumbnail so much less eventful <laughs> than her scars okay we're going out gather team oh, i want to play inquisition again again i didn't play it very much but i enjoyed it for all we know there's a dozen demons waiting on the other side of that alluvian <clears throat> If it even takes us back to Arlefin. Nev, you sure you're up for this? Don't worry about me. Shall we? Let's do this. This is what I feel like I remember from an older game. It's quiet. Well, isn't that a surprise? There's the ritual site. But if the gods really did get out, they're not here anymore. Right, let's take a look around and see if we can find... Hook 
Smash! <laughs> Strife? Irlin? It's me, Lace Harding. Harding? What are you doing back in Arlathan? It's complicated. I can see that. Rook, Nev, this is Strife and Irlin. Varric and I met them when we first started hunting down Solus. They're veil jumpers, experts in ancient elven magic. You hardly experts. I should have been able to shut that artifact down. I'm sorry, Tarith. It's not your fault. Since the sky ripped open, the magic's been surging. Bunch of artifacts that had been dormant for centuries started coming alive. This is because of Finn Harrell's... Sorry. Solus's ritual, isn't it? You all were supposed to stop him. Okay, so one complaint that I've got, and I'm finding the game fun, I do like the game, um, so I'm not pooping on it at all. One thing that I do sort of feel as I'm playing it currently is that I'm not super enga engaged in the storyline and I feel like I think I've figured it out. I think I've kind of put my finger on it. I feel a lot like the game is talking at me. Like these kind of cutscenes, I feel like I am a passive observer. It's almost like watching a movie where you're just absorbing the information. I just, like, And then eventually it gets to your character and you say something. But I feel like I'm not really having much impact on the story. And I feel like, again, just very passive and it's very talk at me -y. Like, And it's very explainy as well. It's kind of like me when I over explain stuff. I feel like less is more um, and I was comparing it to, I was talking about it yesterday, um, some of my family have been playing it and I was compa comparing it to um, like the Bo Baldur's Gate tutorial. If you think about the tutorial on Baldur's Gate, like being on the Nautiloid, no, I can't speak, being on the Nautiloid, like there are not many lines there and yet I am so invested in the story, I am so invested in the characters. Like what have you got? You've got, let me out! Like um, something about like, um, something's what you need in a fight <laughs> like get to the hell like there's very few lines and yeah i am like i would die for those characters i am like what's happening next and i feel like sometimes this is an example of like less is more in storytelling where i feel like it's almost like big brother or something it's like they're hand holding me a lot like maybe less dialogue early on would be better but making the lines more impactful because i just feel very passive in this game but we'll see we'll see how it goes because it is early stages but again i feel like the story could be hooking me better in the early stages rather than kind of It's hard to explain and I like I'll keep thinking about what I mean with this but again if anyone was happened to be watching from Dragon Age and they're looking to kind of like how do we improve on the next game like what can we do better I would say that I would say reduce the dialogue early on in the game but make it more impactful and kind of like sh like shorter sharp like shorter sharper bursts of dialogue uh, to hook me in more rather than just feeling like I'm sat there kind of passively while people talk at me um which I'm doing now guys sorry let's keep going um you were all supposed to stop him <laughs> don't blame us oh that was not what I wanted we did to pick. stop him the sky's not pulling itself apart Oops. anymore is it but but it didn't go as cleanly as we hoped Solus got pulled into the fade and two somethings got pulled out or some ones I mean Two of the Evanuris, Elgonan and Gilanane. Methalanast. The elven gods of old, the Evanuris. If they truly have returned. Then things just got a whole lot worse. 
Right, let's try and press the button that I'm intending to press this time. I'm glad it doesn't time out as well. It gives me a chance to talk to you guys. Because, again, when it's got those big bits of dialogue, like, I can't just kind of, like, jump in with what I want to say. And I have to try and, like, remember it for when it finally pauses. And I'm finding myself zoning out as well. Like, I'm not listening to what they're saying because I'm kind of going, ooh. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel like it needs to be more, like... Oof. Also, they don't move very much. I don't know what it is. I don't know what kind of motion capture they used. But again, and I'm sorry, I'm going to compare it to Baldur's Gate a lot. It's natural because it's what I've been playing a lot and it's a fantasy game. But if you think about Astarian, right, when you first meet Astarian, he's all... <sighs> like he's moving so much. He's got so good like facial expressions. I'm really engaged when I watch him. And then these guys are kind of like, we have to get to Solus. We have to stop him. Yes, I agree. We must stop Solus before the ritual is complete. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. Like, and again, I don't know the process that they use to, you know, do the acting and the animations or if they even use mocap, but it's just a little bit clunky at this stage again we'll see how it gets into it the most we progress through the game and the, the story i don't want to poop all over it it's just something that's bothering me she's quite practical she's just gonna be like so what next so elgin i don't and know Gilman why i'm making her american which means what you thought solace was bad he's a bit of a bastard true but next to them Let's just say they weren't known for their like, kindness. I get it. I get it. There's the gods are bad. Solus led the rebellion against the Evaniris, and a reason he imprisoned them. But now they've escaped. Yes. Let's go and Path stop them. Is in bad shape. We need to get him back to the camp. We've still got dozens of Veil jumpers unaccounted for. How can we help? We need to find Belara Luter. She's the best there is at working with our ancient artifacts. And also at blowing them up. She was off looking for another artifact before this ritual shook everything loose. If anyone can get a handle on all this wild magic and the artifact it's setting off, it'll be her. Right. You get your friend back to your camp and... <sighs> we'll find Valara. Um, I'm not going to tell her what to do. Like, she has... An, you know, I want her to be able to say what she's ready for. Um... Nev, you're still injured. Nev, you're injured. Stay here with the Veil Jumpers. It's a headache. I'll be fine. I know you want to help, but we don't know what we'll face out there and you're in no condition to fight. All right. Just watch your backs. We'll meet you back at the Veil Jumper camp. It's just south of here. Bellara's out near some elven ruins to the west. At least she was three days ago. I'd start your search there. Good luck, Rook. And thank you. She reminds me of the insect woman of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't think of the name. Not Nebula, is it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad with names, guys. Okay, so this is where we're going to find this Belair woman. Who's one of the Veil Jumpers. It's pretty. I like it. Is it me, or is there something strange about this fog? It all feels a little off. Like, everything shifted a little bit. It's the Fae! Open the journal. Why? I pressed up and you didn't open the journal. What are you on about? Oh, right, let's just search the area. Okay. I'm gonna quickly run around to see if there's anything I can pick up. Because, I don't know, this is what you did if you were playing Tomb Raider back in the day. I feel like it's a bit of a like barrel forward kind of game though. Like, so I'll just take my headphone out so I'm not shouting as much. Um, like, I feel like it's pretty linear. Like, there's not a huge amount of like world exploration to do. Yeah, look at that. It's just led me straight to straight to the marker. There is something going on over here, but I think it's just pretty butterflies. It kind of drew my attention though, as though there would be something there to look at. Is that suit of armor moving? Oh! Did I did a block? Let's get some distance on this thing. Because that's a melee fighter, right? Ah! Anything on how do I 
I doing a special move again? I should have dodged instead of blocking. Like she got him more than I did. Oh, that's Ballard. Oh, that's Ballara. Gotcha. Cool. Oh, people. Where'd you come from? Ballara? Ballara Luter. Strife and Eelin sent us to find you. Who are you, exactly? Call me Rook. Lace Harding. Protocol is to wait a full week before they send anyone out to look for me. I've only been gone three days. Well, the situation's changed. For the worse, unfortunately. Our gods, Elganon and Gilanane, they've escaped from Fenharel's prison. And by all accounts, they want to destroy the world. Got oh. that. Yes, that is very much for the worse. Okay, wait. I need a second. See what I mean? It's kind of like they just, it's very repetitive, the dialogue. Um, like, she doesn't understand what's going on. Obviously, we had to give her that information, but I've heard it so many times. I'm just kind of like, here we are again. Um, what I do like is, like, all the gadgets. Um, so when they were fighting in the previous scene, that big robot, the girl had, like, what I would call an astrolabe, which I use in my own D&D &D campaigns. I've got this... Um, I've got this ice mountain and they're all really kind of futuristic and scientific and it's all kind of a bit steampunky. So the thing that she's got on her arm there, I'm kind of really into that. Um, kind of reminds me as well of like the Marvel movie. Is it Marvel? The one with like the rings? <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that one. Again, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> um, I need a second, you don't have it. Um, she's not mean to people. Uh, understandable. It's a lot to take in. It does sort of explain a few things, though. Like what? The surge of raw magic in the area. These artifacts started waking up a while ago, but in fits and starts. One here, a couple there. Then... A couple of days ago, the sky split open. And now, raw magic. Thick as fog. Only a god, or gods, could have done that. There's something kind of exciting about it. And dangerous. Really dangerous. Dangerous enough that I was gonna head back to the Veil Jumper camp, but... But what? See that shimmer? That's a Veil Bubble. It's separating us from the rest of the real world, so to speak. You can only pass through it one way. Once you're in, you can't get out. Leroy Jenkins, let's go. Um, why do they all stand like that? Like, like they all, they, like they've all been like texting too much, and they've got text neck, and they need to kind of like roll the shoulders back, and, like push the head back, and get a massage. <laughs> like, I feel like that's how I am at the end of like editing. It's like, oh, I don't know. It's, oh, it's making my neck ache. Um, we'll force our way out. We don't have time for this. Let's just force our way out. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I don't know what contacting that much raw magic would do to you. But there's another way. A bubble like that? There has to be something at the center that's generating it. Something powerful. If we can find it and remove it safely, I mean, the bubble itself should collapse. And then we're back in reality? I really, really hope so. Well then, let's get going. See what I mean about it not really giving us choice? It's kind of like an illusion of choice. It kind of, whatever we say we want to do, the game's like, well, you're going to do this anyway. I'm like, okay. But Ballara has joined our party, so she is a new companion. Sweet, I need to heal. Uh, and I've only got one healing potion left, so I need another one. Right, let's remind myself of the, the moves. So we've got jump, uh, spam X, uh, dodge, whatever that does. And then is it down? How, no, how do I... I don't want to change the hammer, I don't like it. How do I get... Um, like, I can't remember how to get my special weapons out. No, I have no idea how to get to it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so 
um, right button will get me my special moves. And then what I can like, oh, I can tell my companions to use their special moves as well. Soothing potion grants rejuvenation. Okay, that'll be good. So that'd be good like if we're in a battle and we need like continual health. She also has a health thing, replenish, instantly restores your health. God, this is tricky, guys. This is a lot of buttons. Ooh, okay, balance beam. To get to the artifact at the center of the bubble, but these magical constructs keep getting in the way. We've handled a share of demons. A few dozen more shouldn't be a problem. Spirits, not demons. They're animating those suits of armor. The armor's attuned to the artifact to protect it from threats. Threats like us, I'm guessing. I need to find a vendor before I can sell anything, guys. I do like these butterflies, they're very pretty. See what I mean? I, you, you can explore a little bit, but for the most part it's like, no, nah, we want you to go across this log, <laughs> you know? Let's go see if we can get over here. Let's see if we can go and do things in the wrong That's order. The edge of the bubble. Can't pass through it. We need to shut down the artifact first. See? It's like they're bossing me around now. They're like, how dare you go off the beaten path? You've got to do what we've told you to do. Can I, like, smash through this? No. Okay. Fine. Do your thing. What's this? Flawless crystal. What's up here? Is that water just swirling into the air? We call that kind the whirlpool. The anomaly, I mean. Never seen one this size, though. It's pretty, I like it. It's probably gonna kill me. Some kind of water demon is probably gonna come out of that now. I feel like I should save right now. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. else up here i mean it's very beautiful the environment's lovely got some like little red butterflies now demons right where <sighs> we need to go then let's deal with them quick oh i mean just spamming the button there could you hear me use right button and select right i know i can do that guys it's fine uh um let me just fight let me just fight for a hot second Why am I not? Oh, I'm just gonna start attacking again. I keep doing that. Oh, they're dodging as well. Right, one down. Go. <laughs> they dodge a lot. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm kind of doing it, I think. There's another one here. Okay. Oh, another one! Ah! One, two, three, four. Nice! I think I like made something like go back at him then. Did you see that? That was cool. Okay, press up to show your current quest and any of- uh, okay, I, that didn't work before. But I've got three skill points, so I can put them on abilities that I'm never going to learn how to use. <laughs> and I'm just going to continually spam buttons. Okay, but what have I learned? I can go up like this, and I think I can get this woman to, like, instore everybody's health. Like that. Nice! I do need more health potions. Hopefully there's going to be some of those vases in this temple. Um, and what else can I do? Um, I can spend some of my ability points. So going into here, I've got skills, right? Because I leveled up, so I think I have more skills. So um, what do I want to do? I did say that I was going to be a slayer, right? But this is the warrior core. So view this. I've got one point available. So I can go up here and get this. Titan stomp, uh, area control, uh, lots of damage. Cool down 60 seconds, oblige, overwhelm, create a shockwave around you by slamming into the ground, deals very high stagger to nearby enemies. 
Um, I don't know how to actually do it though. Let's acquire it. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. It doesn't... Oh, I think it's an ability, right? So it's going to show up when I bring up that ability wheel. Okay, I get that. I understand that now. Wait, hang on. Let's go to this area here. Because this is like the next bit that we can unlock. So, Bulwark. Like, that's going to make, make me physically, like, more tanky. What's this one? Improved uh, shield toss. I do like doing shield toss. And uh, trait return to sender. Tap LB the moment a projectile hits and send it back to the person. Okay, that's pretty cool. This is what I've already got, this kind of like driving kick. And then we can also come down this way, right? Uh, downfall. I like passives because then I don't have to do it. It'll just do it automatically. Fury of the Forge. Burning steel blades rain down on your enemies. So, yeah, I think I probably want to go this way. Let's go to like the end stuff. What's like end game stuff? Heroic leap, leap forward and deal heavy damage. Uh, for gold and glory, glory for, favors the bold, leap into the fray. Slayer, reckless in battle, the lords of fortune, slayer, specialize in two handed weapons. Well, that's what I want to do. Breaking enemy defenses and quick movement around the battlefield. So that's kind of the direction I actually do want to head in. If possible. Have I got that tumbling blades? No, I haven't got that yet. What did I say this one was? Oh, shield volley? Right trigger and then Y on return. I don't know if I'm going to rem rem remember to do that. That's the thing. BB, then XY. I mean, I just can't get those combo moves. I, it's not something I can do. Let's go back out. And uh, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. I don't want these episodes to be too long. So uh, I want to get them up as regularly as I can. But I want them to be like shorter videos so that it's easier to edit. And I can just kind of get them up quicker. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll be up whenever I'm able to get them up. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, hopefully uh, the storyline is going to get a bit more punchy. And uh, we're going to keep picking up those characters. And we're going to gonna get into some trouble in the next episode so stick around and join me then bye friends oh you've got finger guns this time instead of love hearts <laughs> nice